Art is a reflection of our society, a tug and pull of value and a ripple effect in the ocean of our culture. Today, we're gonna to embark on a journey that peels back the layers of art, of money, and the economic impact. We're exploring art beyond the aesthetics, beyond what art looks like. Let's set our course for this journey. As this episode unfolds, expect to delve deep into art's intricate relationship with global economics. There's a profound influence on nations, and there's a compelling reason cities that are lacking a robust art scene should invest in nurturing one. Look, this isn't gonna be your typical art discourse. We're charting a very unique course, connecting unseen dots between art's heartbeat and societal reverberations and the global stage on which art plays. Hi, Glory Seekers. I'm Mariah Elise, and in every corner of the world, there are those who seek the intangible, those who chase the brilliance of creation. I've been surrounded by these types of people my entire life, and I've had the up-close look at many journeys seeking glory. But we don't seek glory for the accolades. We don't seek glory for the awards or the public acknowledgement. We seek it for the doors that we know we have to open to pay homage to the people that have opened them for us and to honor our positioning for the generations after us. So welcome, glory seekers. This journey is for you, the ones with the insustainable hunger of understanding the nuances of the art world. The ones that know art isn't just a fleeting moment of brilliance. It's an enduring statement, a legacy handed down through generations. It's passion. Whether you're here seeking the glory of creation are leading the charge of shaping the narratives of within this world. Dear Glory is our shared space. This is Dear Glory, my tribute to the relentless pursuit of passion, the challenges, the victories, and the undeniable impact of art in our lives. Now let's go ahead and dive into the art market's complexities. Now I want you guys to remember that these are my thoughts. These are my streams of consciousness that I share with you. You may not agree, but I'm always open for the right conversations. First, let's go ahead and set the stage by comparing art to other fields. Of course, fields that lie within the entertainment industries. That's fashion, that's music, that's film. Now let's think about how these industries are on a global stage, a global scale, intersecting global economics. You can compare these industries just as we will do in this video on a global scale, a national one and also a local one. Just like those industries, the art world isn't only about passion. It's not only about cultural messaging. It's not only about art for art's sakes and aesthetics. That's definitely core, but this is also about legacy, representation, and to keep it real, strongly about economic power. Now I wanna put some perspective on the market, economic power and global interconnectedness. We are always getting clouded with things like the art market outperformed the S&P 500 again this year. Now we understand where their notion comes from. We understand Understand what part of this market is responsible for that specific performance. And because of economic power, we should understand why this part of the market is highlighted as a firm indicator, right? Positioning the art market as a better player than the S&P 500. But that's just not the whole story. There's a lot more complexity around the art market. The story that's not told in that is how volatile certain areas of this market can be, or even how successful an artist can be that hasn't made every single headline. So many people use the comparison to the S&P 500 to mislead what this world really is. And it leaves a vague understanding of how multifaceted this world is. So we cannot encapsulate this entire market into the single comparison of the S&P 500 that only covers one layer of this world. See, unlike the S&P 500 or other conventional financial indices, the art market doesn't conform to a uniform set of rules or trends. It's not monolithic where you can predict outcomes with a high degree of certainty. You can make very informed predictions, but not to the highest degree of certainty. Instead, it's a really diverse ecosystem with various niches and dynamics at play. But what I don't want you guys to forget is the art market is still an ecosystem. So there are still layers. Just like every other entertainment ecosystem, there are layers that can be climbed. Much like the entertainment industry, the art world is rich of interconnected layers, each offering distinct opportunities, challenges, and rewards. Think about actors. Just as they climb the ladder from local theater productions to Broadway, or the way that musicians go from playing in small clubs to headlining major festivals, artists navigate their own unique paths 
through the layers of the art ecosystem. Art is not just about a single number or a straightforward comparison to a stock market index. It's about the interplay of countless factors. The art market is to build a web of anchors to lead a successful career and to add to the financial value of the artists and the artist's works. Those anchors are collector support, gallery support, residency support, museum support, and award support. Building this web is very important. It can be studied, but it's still not linear. So many people use the comparison to the S&P 500 to mislead what this art world really is. It's crucial to recognize that while financial indices like the S&P 500 provide a useful benchmark for traditional investments, they're ill-suited. They don't work to encapsulate the nuances of the art market. Attempting to measure art's value solely in financial terms is really an oversimplification of this journey. Not to mention the art world, unlike the stock market, does not operate solely on economic principles. Now I want to put art on a further global economic stage. We could go way deep with this, but I think it will be worth splitting into multiple episodes, multiple videos. Just as entire industries can rise and they can fall in response to, the, to global economic landscape, the art world, the world of art, is no exception. Consider the global supply chain, for instance. Just as the manufacturing sector grapples with the rise in material costs and shipping expenses, the art world faces very similar challenges. You can think about art materials, from canvases to paints to pigments, they're sourced from around the world. So those fluctuations in material prices and international shipping costs, they're going to significantly impact the economics of the art world because they're significantly impacting art production. Speculation, that's another. It's a phenomenon seen in financial markets. It also has a role in the art world. When, spec when art collectors or speculators believe that the art prices are going to rise, they may buy artworks not out of appreciation for the art itself, but with the hope of selling for a profit later. That speculative aspect can create bubbles within the art market, just like in other markets, leading to inflated prices and market volatility. That interconnectedness between art and global finance becomes evident when we witness the effects of all of these different bubbles. I want you to think furthermore, the art world is influenced by cultural shifts. There's no doubt in that. It's influenced by trends that are in turn shaped by broader economic and geopolitical forces. Think about tourism, for example. When countries invest in cultural tourism or use art as a form of cultural diplomacy, it's going to boost the economies by attracting international visitors. Conversely, economic downturns or political tensions can disrupt the art world's global flow. In essence, the art world operates as an economy in its own right. It's an ecosystem with its own economic distribution. There are buyers, there are sellers, and there are people in the middle, just like any other industry is subject to the forces of supply and demand, influenced by changing taste, because we know collectors like to change their tastes, economic trends, and geopolitical events. To put it really simple, the art world, much like the broader creative industries, isn't confined by national borders. It's a global stage where innovation, adaptation, and creativity, there's no bounds. The art produced in one corner of the world can resonate with audiences on the opposite side of the globe. This showcases the interconnectedness and the universality can resonate with audiences on the opposite side of the globe. This showcases how connected and how universal artistic expression is and how that ties into the economy. So when we examine the art world, we have to remember that it's not an isolated entity, but a vital component of the global economic landscape. The influence of the art world extends far beyond what can meet our eyes. It continues to evolve as it navigates the currents of how the world changes. Now let's narrow our focus to explore the economic impact of the art market at the national level. While global economics will play a significant role, we can't go without acknowledging the influence of art on individual nations and their economics. Keep this in mind. Art functions as a cultural mirror. It reflects identity, it reflects values, traditions, and all of the above of a nation. Museums, galleries, and cultural institutions become custodians of this heritage, preserving and showcasing it for generations to come. Now, in this role, art contributes significantly to shaping and preserving national cultural identities. Cultural tourism is a potent economic driver for nations. Museums, historical sites, art scenes draw visitors from both within the country and around the world. 
tourists who come to explore these cultural treasures, they're going to contribute to the local and the national economy by spending on accommodations, dining, transportations, and patronizing local businesses around these museums and these national treasures. That's going to bolster the economy. You'll find that nations invest in local arts and cultural initiatives by providing grants, funding, and artist residencies. These initiatives serve as incubators for creative talent nurturing a thriving art scene that not only enriches the nation's cultural fabric, but also contributes to its economic well-being. Art markets and auction houses that are found in, in cities like New York, London, or Paris serve as our Paris are going to be magnets for collectors, investors, and art enthusiasts. These markets are going to generate substantial revenue, becoming integral components of the national economy. Think about local art galleries and the dealers and the crucial role that they play in the national art economy. They serve as middlemen connecting artists with collectors and art enthusiasts around the world and around the nation. They facilitate sales and in turn, they support artists' livelihoods. Think about national art fairs and events that provide a platform for artists to showcase their work while attracting visitors. These events have a dual economic impact. They're gonna drive tourism, stimulate cultural exchange, and create jobs that bolsters the national economy. Public art projects commissioned by cities not only enhance the aesthetic appeal of a city, the aesthetic appeal of a nation, or of urban spaces, but also stimulate the local economy. They create job opportunities, attract visitors, and contribute to the overall vitality of communities. Think about investing in art education, in institutions, cultivating the next generation of artists and creative professionals. Additionally, it elevates a nation's cultural standing on the global stage, often attracting international students, and scholars. Art also plays a pivotal role in urban revitalization. The presence of art, whether through street art, public art, public sculptures, it breathes new life into urban areas, attracting businesses, residents, and visitors, and it reinvigorates communities. Furthermore, cities and regions develop unique art scenes that contribute to their identity. These artistic hubs foster innovation, attract talent, and stimulate the local economy through gallery sales, cultural events, and artistic collaborations. Now look, I want to transition to a call, and this call is to local cities. It might not be the cities that have a thriving art community already, like New York, or like London, or even like Chicago, because I really consider Chicago, even though, even though they don't consider themselves a thriving art community, I do. And I think more people actually need to recognize Chicago as a thriving art community. But I want to turn our attention to the incredible potential that local art initiatives hold for cities and for communities. This isn't just an exploration, it's a passionate call to cities that may not fully recognize the economic impact of the arts to invest in their local artistic endeavors. I want you guys to think about a city where the arts are not only celebrated for their cultural significance, but also revered for their role as powerful economic drivers. In these cities, art galleries, studios, grassroots cultural endeavors, they're gonna flourish, creating spaces where artists can thrive. They create spaces where residents can engage in vibrant cultural experiences. But the ripple effect that we don't really talk about goes further as these artistic hubs attract visitors, hosting events and exhibitions that bring much revenue to neighboring businesses. That includes restaurants, cafes, local shops, and the impact does not stop there. Supporting local artists seeing can transform your city into a sought after cultural tourism destination. Travelers and tourists are drawn to cities with active art communities. Increased tourism related revenue from hotel stays to dining experiences. This influx of visitors isn't just a boom for the artists, that invigorates the entire local economy benefiting a wide range of businesses. You have to think about the transformation of neighborhoods through public art projects, through murals, through sculptures. These artistic initiatives enhance the aesthetic of communities, making them more attractive places to live and to visit. Urban renewal initiatives that embrace art can revitalize neighborhoods, attract new residents, and stimulate local businesses. Investing in local art programs and educational initiatives has far-reaching effects. These initiatives empower youth by providing them with opportunities to creative expression, skill development, 
and personal growth. Some young talents may even receive scholarships for higher education, creating a brighter future for the next generation. The impact extends to entrepreneurship and job creation as well. Art-related small businesses, event venues, and educational institutions thrive in areas with active art communities, generating economic activity and supporting local entrepreneurships. Art fairs and cultural events draw attendees from within and beyond the communities, stimulating local commerce and fostering cultural exchange. But it does not end there. An active art scene can enhance property values in neighborhoods. Artistic communities are seen all the time as desirable places to live. They lead an increased demand for housing and enhance property values by embracing creative placemaking, initiatives that integrate art into community development projects Cities can enhance the quality of life for their residents and create unique neighborhood identity. This not only fosters a sense of pride and belonging, but it also attracts investment and talent to the city. In essence, we urge cities to view their local initiatives as more than just cultural expressions. They are dynamic forces that fuel economies, safeguard cultural heritage, and shape societal narratives. By investing in the arts, cities can drive change and prosperity within their borders, positioning themselves as vibrant hubs of creativity and economic growth. The economic potential of the arts within their grasp waiting to be unlocked for the benefit of the city and the residents. I just really want you guys to remember that within this market, your practice is important. What you have to say is important. How you influence with your perspective is important. With that, also understand that your creation isn't just an artistic statement. It can become an asset, a commodity within a tangible economic value in the global marketplace. And if you're in the shoes I'm in, being black in these realms requires even more thought, even if we don't want it to. I might get a little flag here, but whether we like it or not, our advancement is advocacy. And that's why, dear glory, being black in these realms means more than just creating. It's a diplomatic battle for space, voice, and narrative amidst shifting economic and cultural landscapes. Somebody got to know this stuff because we hold important space and the space we hold, we are smart enough, intelligent enough to keep a hold of it. I would like to also invite you to learn more about my practice and my organization, Elise Art Group, where we are building legacies and celebrating artists. At Elise Art Group, our philosophy revolves around more than just representation. We believe in building lasting legacies. At the heart of our endeavors, lies a commitment to holistic development, ensuring artists don't just create, but they thrive. We're not just an organization, we're a sanctuary for those whose voices need amplification. While Houston, Texas stands as our base, we far and wide beyond Houston. We have the honor of representing folks like Kobe Dill, Lamont French, and Erica Alonzo. And their incredible journeys from budding talents to celebrated artists bear a testimony to our unwavering dedication. Yet our reach, our art house, an innovative incubator serves as a space for artists to publicly display their work, facilitating relationships leading to broader representation. In collaboration with leading galleries, it also offers a unique testing ground for artistic expressions. Our mission is clear, to build legacies and celebrate every artist under our wing. To every creator watching, your voice, your vision, your impact stretches beyond media. You're not just a participant in the art world, your trailblazer in it. Don't let this information jade you. Please let it inspire you. So there you have it, Glory Seekers. Today's journey was just a glimpse into the world of art. If you found this exploration inspiring, I invite you to engage with us in the comments below. Let's keep this conversation going. Thank you for being a part of Dear Glory and for your unwavering pursuit of art's enduring. Until next time, keep seeking glory in every corner of the world. This is Dear Glory, where passion meets purpose. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you'll never miss an episode. Peace.